I just think the church should be the happiest place in the world. Amen. Like the world, the world, you know, the world is so sad, so depressed on antidepressant drugs and trying to cheer themselves up and trying to find happiness and trying to find joy. But it's momentary. It doesn't last. It's kind of runs out. It's empty and they have to keep trying to find joy. But when you get saved, born again, you encounter the living God, the one who created joy, the one who created laughter. I tell you, he fills you with his joy. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Part of the kingdom is joy. Some people think that the devil invented joy and laughter. You know, religion. Religion says, you're not allowed to laugh in church. Oh, you're not allowed to be happy in church. And someone laughs, ha ha, ha oh, it's a demon. It's like, just relax, man. <laughs> okay? God invented joy. Church should be the happiest place in the world. See, people are looking for drugs and medication to, to get rid of their sadness, to make them happy. But they, it's, it's momentary. They should be able to come to church and encounter the living God. And joy fills their heart. They come into the kingdom, which is a kingdom of joy. Amen. And so I think at church, we should just let the joy out. There should be so much laughter and happiness and fun in the church. Amen. God is a God of joy. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of joy. And uh, He's not formal. He's not so serious. Sometimes, you know, He says some serious things. But He's also a God of fun. Amen. And, uh, man, I just, when, when I got filled with the Spirit, the first thing that happened to me, I was 14. And I was, I was so hungry um, for the Holy Spirit. We were having these revival meetings at uh, my my parents' church, and um, lots of people were coming down to the front, and my dad was going along the lines praying for people. Joy, joy, fire, fire, fire. People were falling over, boof, 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 falling over, and they were laughing in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I thought, wow, I was just a young kid, and I just thought, oh, that looks good. That looks like fun. I want some of that. I want to I wanna laugh in the Holy Spirit. I want to get full of the joy of God, because that really looks like fun. And uh, it, it didn't look like demons. It's not demons. So there's a lot of the church, the, the, a lot of religious people, they think, oh, no, that's demons. People fall over and they, they laugh. Oh, that's demons. It's like they believe more in demons than in God. They believe more in the power of demons than in the power of the Holy Spirit. My God is a God of joy. And he, he can make you fall. I mean, when you get in his presence, you're probably going to fall over. When his presence comes, the, the priests in the, in, the, in the temple, when the glory of God came, they just fell to the floor, they fell to their faces. So much power, so much glory in the room when God's presence comes. Sometimes it's so powerful, it's so overwhelming that you fall over. Sometimes He fills you with laughter and joy because sometimes that's what you need. Because a lot of churches, we're so serious. And God's like, just wants us to laugh a little bit, just wants us to relax and take it easy. And He wants to get us on the ground and then just come and tickle us under our arms and say, You need to laugh. You need to have a laugh. It's all serious. Have a laugh. Enjoy. I mean, the, the, um, the, the new covenant, the wine of the new covenant. You know, the new covenant is a, is a wineskin. The Bible refers to the new covenant as a wineskin. And the grace of God, the, the message of grace, the, the new covenant is a spirit covenant. It's the new wine of the spirit. The Bible says don't be drunk on, on, on alcohol, on, on wine, but be filled with the spirit. Amen. God wants us to drink of the new covenant because it's good news, and it makes you happy. And the more you drink of the new covenant, the spirit of the new covenant, the more you drink of the new wine, you get drunk in the Holy Spirit. Amen? And some, sometimes all you need is, is just another drink in the Holy Spirit. Amen? See, we're running around looking for this, looking for that. Sometimes God just says, you just need to get drunk in the new covenant. Get drunk on the grace of God. Get drunk on the Spirit of God. Drink. The Bible says that, from the throne of God flows a river. There's a river of life that's flowing from His throne. And He invites us to come and drink. Come and drink for free. It's, it's a river of refreshing. It's a river of life. It's teeming with life. And we get to drink for free. Jesus paid the price. We don't have to pay for it. Jesus paid the price. And we are invited to drink for free. And, us, and we went, I went to these revival meetings and everyone was getting prayed for. I thought, I want some of that. Give me some of that. And so I went out the front and uh, my father, he prayed for people, and people were going down. Boom, 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 boom. He prayed for me, nothing happened. 
Next person, fall down, fall down, laughing, laughing, falling, falling. I was like, why didn't I get something? What's wrong with me? What happened? What happened, God? Where are you? <laughs> and so I went up the next night. I thought, no, no, I want to get some of this. I want to get some of this. And uh, he, he, he went along the line again. Fire, fire, fall, fall. People were falling, 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 falling. Pray for me. Nothing happened. Next person, falling, 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 falling. I'm just, everyone's rolling around on the ground laughing, just, <laughs> just full of the joy of God, getting happy in the spirit. And I was like, oh, that's not fair. Why am I just standing here? And so I, I think I just went back to my seat. And, uh, and, but, but see, something happened inside of me. I got hungry. I'm like, I, I just, I can see that this is real. Because people came up sad, and then they got filled with the Spirit, and they left happy. And that's God. Because, because joy, good. Sadness, bad. Happiness, from God. Depression, from the devil. Okay? So joy is from God. I mean, if someone falls over and they like, <laughs> start laughing like a witch, then I think, okay, maybe we need to drive out a demon there. Maybe that is the devil. Okay, it's like, <laughs> I would think, okay, okay, maybe that's not God. All right? And I'd go and have some discernment and figure that out. And if you've got to drive out a demon, do it. All right? But most people, they fall over in the power of the God and they're like, ha, 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 from the belly. Oh, <laughs> the Bible says, from your belly will flow rivers of living water. I mean, what does that look like? What does that sound like? Oh, no, it's quiet. You've got to be so quiet. It's so quiet in the church. No, you don't. In heaven, there's just ruckus. There's just noise and glory and angels worshiping and the saints singing. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb of God. There's, the, the, there's sounds of angels and rushing winds. and It's just glory. It's just amazing sounds of heaven. So much activity. And, uh, you, you know, we want heaven to come to earth. We want heaven to come to the church. But, but formalism just wants to keep God out. We, we're afraid of God. We want to put God in a box. We want to contain God because we're scared of, of, of what God might do if he shows up. Well, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit showed up like a mighty rushing wind. And he came in like fire. And it came in its separate. What, what does a mighty rushing wind sound like in the spirit? I mean, they've never experienced that before. All of a sudden, they're experiencing a mighty rushing wind coming into them. This is the early church. The very first church was birthed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mighty rushing wind comes in. Imagine if you experience that for the first time. You think, whoa, is this a devil? Whoa. No. You think, well, this is a little bit weird. This is a little bit strange. But this is what Jesus promised. He said, wait in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. Wait for the Holy Spirit because when He comes, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the outermost parts of the earth. We need the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit came, and they got filled, and they got drunk in the Holy Spirit. They started laughing. They started prophesying. People outside, they gathered. They, they came, and they gathered around all the unsaved. They said, oh, what is going on here? Listen, they, they, they sound crazy. They sound like they're drunk. They've been drinking wine. Peter gets up. He says, no, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. They're not drunk as you suppose. So they were drunk, just not as you suppose. They're not drunk on natural wine. They're drunk on Holy Spirit wine, new covenant. And then Peter stood up. See, a lot of the church gets afraid like, oh, the Holy Spirit will come and things will get out of control. No, that's what good leadership's for. Leadership helps to bring the banks of the river. Amen. Peter got up on the day of Pentecost. As a leader, he stood up. He said, you know, they were all confused. What's happening? What's happening is this guy. He got up and he said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. He explained what was happening. And as he explained it all to them, he was preaching the gospel and 3,000 people got saved. When the Holy Spirit came to the first church. And a lot of the church today wants to keep the Holy Spirit out because they're afraid things could get weird. God is okay with a little bit of weird. God is actually okay with a little bit of weird. We, we get so formal and it's our preference and, oh, no, we like things safe and comfortable and predictable. God, God is not like that. He doesn't like things so safe and predictable and so comfortable. He is okay with a little bit because he wants to break out. He doesn't want to be put in a box. He, he, the wind, Jesus said, the, whole, the Spirit blows like the wind. You don't know where it comes from, where it's going. You've got to flow with it. you just got to flow with the Holy Spirit, with the wind. Because he wants to do amazing things. 
Jesus did some really strange things. When the presence of Jesus showed up, he did some really strange things. Like, like I'll get back to my story, by the way. <laughs> like the blind man. Son of David, have mercy on me. He was blind. Jesus walking along with the crowds. And um, he hears this man crying, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus goes up to him. And the disciples are like, don't bother. Don't bother the master. Everyone's like, don't bother Jesus. Don't bother. Jesus, like he heard him saying, Son of David, he was, he was acknowledging Christ as Messiah. The line of the tribe of Judah, this, the line of David, he was acknowledging Christ as Messiah. He was surrendering to Son of David, King, King Jesus, he was actually surrendering. And any time in the, in the New Testament, when people surrendered to Christ, they came and fell at his feet, they touched the hem of his garment, his power came over them, and they got healed, they got set free, glory came. Amen. And he was saying, Son of David, he was blind. And Jesus walks up to him, he says, what do you want? He says, I want to see. But he was completely blind. In fact, he didn't have any eyes, eyeballs. He'd been blind from, from birth, he didn't have any eyeballs. And so... Nice, safe, predictable Jesus. He gets down in the dirt. He scoops up some dirt and then he spits in it. And his disciples are like, whoa, what are you doing? And he's like, starts playing with the dirt. Starts making some mud. Just, just, just dirt and spit. Playing with it in his hand, making some mud. His disciples are like, uh, excuse me, Jesus, like, what are you doing? Like, stop that. That's weird. Shouldn't do that. And see, we live 2,000 years after that. And so we know that it worked out really good. We know that the guy got healed. But imagine if you were there in the moment. You'd never experienced this. You'd never seen this before. You would suddenly think Jesus has gone crazy. Jesus, you'd be trying to stop him. Like, Jesus, this, this is not dignified. This is strange. This is, what, are the, what are those people? What are the people going to think? God is showing up and, and he's doing weird things. What are the people going to think? And they, the disciples trying to protect Jesus' dignity. Jesus didn't care. Do, 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 do. And then he just takes it up a notch. He goes, all right, here we go. He starts shoving the dirt into the guy's eye sockets. To his eyes. Just, just. And the disciples are like, whoa, Jesus, stop it. What are you doing? That's crazy. You can't do that. That's abuse. You're abusing. It's physical abuse. You can't do that. Stop it. That's super weird. It was weird before, but now it's really weird. Jesus just like stuffing the guy's eyes with, with mud that he made out of his spit and dirt. And guess what happened? The guy got healed. He received his sight. He got his sight back. It's like I formed you from the dust of the earth. And then the spirit, I breathe the spirit into you. He was like forming those eye sockets here and, and breathing the spirit of life over his eyes. But that was weird. And Jesus, he was just okay with that. What about like... Um, the woman, the, the prostitute, yeah. prostitute, Jesus was reclining at the Pharisee's house, Simon's house, yeah. having dinner with the Pharisees, yeah. the religious Pharisees. And they all, you know, sort of lying down on cushions and they got their feet stretched out and they're kind of on their elbow and they're eating their food. They're lying out. In comes this prostitute. Just the, all these religious people and Jesus are having dinner. In comes this prostitute and she, she kneels down at Jesus' feet. You can imagine everyone's like, uh, what is she doing? Like, what's happening now? And they all know that she's a prostitute, the Pharisees, probably because they went to go and visit her. Because <laughs> religious people love sin. They love sinning. They just hide and pretend like they don't. And in fact, this woman, they try to stone her. They brought her caught in adultery. It's like, where was the guy? He also was committing adultery. How come they didn't bring him out? It's because they set her up. They were trying to set Jesus up. They were religious Pharisees. They were evil, committing all kinds of sin. Religion is evil. It's, it pretends like it hates sin, but actually it loves sin. They brought her, come on, Jesus, we've got a stoner. What are you going to do? Jesus again got down in the dirt. He seems to like the dirt. Started writing, doodling, remember? Doodling, doodling in the sand and... Uh, and then he stood up and he said, whoever's without sin, you be the first one to cast the stone. And they all went away because they all had sin in their life. And they try to act so holy, holier than thou. And we have got to be so tough on sin. You know, watch out for people that we've got to be so tough on sin. I'm like, I want to scratch around in your life and see what you're up to. Hey, like we should. We, we, we're not. They, they actually want to be tough on the sinner. They were trying to be tough. They wanted to stone the sinner. 
Okay? Jesus is tough on sin. He's so tough that he died for our sins. A bloody death died for our sins, but, he, but he's gracious towards the sinner. Amen? And he restored her. He gave her a dignity back. And he said, in fact, can we have the, somebody to come and just minister on the keyboards? If that's okay, if, if someone could come and just, just help. And he gave her her dignity back. He said, woman, where are your accusers? And, and she said, I don't know, they're gone. He said, well, neither do I accuse you. Go your way and sin no more. And the church, the religious church, wants to just, just preach sin no more, sin no more. We've got to sin no more. We've got to sin no more. We've got to be tough on sin. We've got to be tough on sinners. You know, we've got to, it's just holiness, holiness. And meanwhile, they're committing all kinds of crazy sins behind the scene. You scratch below their life, you'll find all kinds of nasty, dirty sins. Got to be tough on sin. Got to be, got to be hard on sin. Jesus, he restored her dignity because grace restores. Amen. It gives dignity. It protects. It loves people. And before you can hear, go and sin no more, you need to hear, neither do I condemn you. Grace. You need to hear grace because it's out of grace and his forgiveness. Out of the grace of God that we're empowered to go and sin no more. Amen. And so this woman... She understood how much she was forgiven. She was so filled with the love of Jesus. She was encountering this amazing person of Jesus. There was nothing sexual from her towards Jesus. It was just pure love. Just for this, for this man that came and forgave her. That restored her. Set her free, in fact. And she came and she knelt at his feet and she was weeping. Just tears. Just tears of love. Tears of joy. Tears of thankfulness, just crying over his feet. And just so many tears that his, she was wetting his feet with her tears. And then she was drying his feet with her hair. You know, that's actually quite sensual. A woman, some other woman drying your feet with the hair. And, and Jesus, it wasn't sexual at all. Jesus wasn't taking it that way. But all the religious Pharisees, I've gone, oh, if he knew what she was like. You know, they, they didn't see the woman. They didn't see this woman that was just so thankful to God for the grace of God, for forgiveness. They just, they just saw a sinner, and, you know. And, and the funny thing was, is that at no point did Jesus stop her. That, that, that's actually the amazing part of the story. Jesus, see, we would be like, oh, this is really uncomfortable, this kind of thing happening. Oh, this is really weird in the church. You know, this kind of thing happening. This is a strange thing. Jesus never stopped her because there was something very powerful taking place in that moment. Something profound and powerful. He never stopped her. Not once. Jesus is okay with a little bit of weird. It's us that have the problem with it. Hey? Now, yes, some, some people do act strange. They do act weird, okay, in the church. But, but they were weird before they got filled with the Spirit. And then they got filled with the Spirit, and then they got even more weirder. They, it, the Holy Spirit didn't make them weird. They were already weird. Amen? They were already strange. Okay? And wherever there's the genuine, there's, there's always the counterfeit. Amen? And so, yes, there's some counterfeit, some strange, flesh, weird stuff that goes on. But we don't throw it all out. We don't throw out the genuine just because there's some counterfeit. No, we, we, we release the genuine. We preach the genuine. Amen? So just because some things happen that we can't understand or not according to our preference when the Holy Spirit comes, it doesn't mean we try to shut it all down and stop it all and get rid of all of it because we want everything to be nice and safe. Nice and predictable. Nice and boring. I tell you, we need the Holy Spirit in the church. We need the flow, the power of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who leads us and guides us into all truth. He is the one who takes all that belongs to Jesus, to the Father, and makes it rever experientially and revelationally known to us. He is the one that convicts the world of sin, of unbelief in Jesus, that they need a Savior. He's the one that draws people to the Savior. How can we keep Him out of the church? We need Him in the church when the lost are in the meeting, are in the place. We want to keep the Holy Spirit out because weird things might happen. The very thing, the very person that they need is the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus, to unlock the Word to the saints, to us, to guide us into all truth. He's the Spirit of truth. The depressed world comes in. They don't need dead religion. 
They need life-giving grace, spirit-filled grace, grace-based, spirit-filled churches. I see a mighty wave that is beginning to rise in the world, around the world of grace-based, spirit-filled churches, mighty saints of God that are grace-based and spirit-filled. They're rising up. God is raising up an army across the world and it's going to break and sweep across this world. And I see millions of churches being planted, millions of grace-based, spirit-filled churches being planted. It's taking too long with religious churches to try to turn them around and get them seeing walking in the gospel. It's taking too long. God is going to plant a whole new wave of new churches that are filled with His grace and filled with His Spirit. You're a part of that wave. Amen. You and I, we're a part of that wave. We're a part of that wave. Believers that are, that are walking in the empowerment of grace. We don't act holier than thou. Yet the atmosphere around our life is one of incredible freedom and victory over sin. Amen. And we will be accused of preaching a license to sin. But actually... Like I said, the atmosphere around our life is one of incredible victory over sin. Amen. 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 So Jesus is okay with a little bit of weird. I'm okay with a bit of weird. Hey? And, and when you've got good leadership, then you can, you know, if you're having a meeting and someone starts manifesting a demon, because the presence of God is so powerful, so strong in the place. See, I'd, I'd rather have demons manifesting because God's presence is here than never having any demons manifesting. No one ever gets healed. No one ever gets saved. No one ever gets transformed because we've kept God out of church. No, I want God in church and it might be a little bit messy. There might be fires that break out. You're like, oh my goodness, what's happening? This is awesome. This is crazy and awesome at the same time. But see, if someone starts manifesting a demon and then people get freaked out, the hair in your, the back of your head Starts on the back of your neck, stands up. Oh, this is weird. No, just leadership gets up. Hey, guys, this is, this is biblical. This is Book of Acts, demons manifesting. See, when Philip, he went to Samaria, he was preaching the gospel, moving in the power. It says, with loud shrieks, many demons came out. What does that sound like? I won't do it because it might freak you out. But I've, I've, I've heard people shrieking because it's demonic. I've heard the demonic shrieks. You know what? I don't get freaked out. I don't get scared of that. That's a wonderful sound. That's the sound of demons coming out. That's the sound of people getting set free. I once heard this lady, my dad was ministering. He said, there's someone here. There's a spirit of suicide, a spirit of death on you. And, and, and as he said, but God wants to break it. And as he said that, this woman was like, Aah! just like this loud, chilling scream. And everyone was like, oh my goodness. And she just screamed for about 10 or 15 seconds. It was like, you know, that was pretty crazy. But afterwards, she started sobbing. <laughs> and the peace of God came over her. My dad said, you've been set free from a spirit of death, from a spirit of murder. You've been set free. She came into wonderful freedom, hey? And so... I went out to the line. I started to get so hungry, so hungry for the Holy Spirit because I went up night after night and I, got, I was getting nothing. And sometimes I think God just, He just holds back. Sometimes, sometimes He holds back because He wants you to get hungry. He just, He wants a hunger to build inside of you. And I just got hungry and I got so hungry. And one night I thought, I have got to get some. And my dad, he called people out. I was the first one. I ran out. I was the first one. I was standing there in line. And my dad, he was really excited. He didn't wait for the catches. He just started praying for the line. He prayed for me first. Fire and boo, fire. I just felt power come out of his hands. The Bible says you'll lay hands and they will, people will receive the Spirit. You lay hands on the sick and they will recover because there's a release of power. When Spirit-filled people pray, lay their hands on the sick, there's a release of Holy Spirit power that flows through them into those people and there is power. And power flowed through my dad and it hit me. I got filled with the Spirit. He threw me backwards. I went flying backwards, no catcher. There was a big brick wall behind me and I went flying into the wall and I hit my head on the wall and I landed on the ground screaming with laughter 
And I was thinking, wow, my head should be really hurting right now. I should be bleeding because I know I hit the wall really hard, like just jolted me and I landed. I was like, no pain. I even felt it's like no blood. And I was just, I was actually just drunk in the Holy Spirit for two hours. I didn't care what people thought. There was hundreds of people there. I didn't care. A 14-year-old kid that's normally quite self-conscious, I didn't care. It's amazing when you get drunk. When you get drunk on natural one, you don't care, right? You're like, hey, you just like karaoke, dancing. You don't, you don't care because it just gets rid of your inhibitions. So does the Holy Spirit one. Makes you bold. Makes you not care about what people think. Amen. It's wonderful. I was just laughing for two hours. <laughs> just this deep, deep, deep belly laughter. From your belly will flow rivers of living water. From my belly it was just flowing. The Holy Spirit was just flowing. He's just filling me with wave after wave of the joy of God. I was like, this is awesome. So good. And I got up a changed person. Completely changed. God had touched my life. I was actually filled with the Spirit then. And the next day, I, I, I was like praying. I was like, God, thank you. Thank you like for that. That was really, and I was like, what the? I can feel my belly moving. It's like, I can feel that His presence. I, I felt His presence in me. From your belly will flow rivers of living. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And like, how can this... This flesh contain God. It's like somehow it does, but when you allow His presence to flow, it's just, it's just, it's, it flows. And, and the next day I, I was praying and I could feel God. Like no one told me to do this. No one showed me. I was 14. I was just discovering the Holy Spirit. I was like, wow, I can feel God's presence. And the next day I was praying and I, I could feel God's presence. And every, every day, since then, since I was 14, I could I felt the presence of God in my life, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the thing is, He's a person. He's God, the Holy Spirit. He's not an it. He's not some mysterious force. He's a person. Jesus says, when He, the Holy Spirit, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will take what is mine and make it known to you. He is a person. See, you can't, you can't get to know an it, but you can get to know a he, a person. You can get to know the Holy Spirit. I tell you, he's my greatest friend. He's my best friend. We're called to walk in the Spirit, amen? amen. To walk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. God is drawing us to himself. He wants us to get to know him. Isn't it amazing? You can know God. God, the Holy Spirit. I tell you what, you... You can just, in your prayer times, in your worship times, you can just invite Him to come. I mean, He lives in you, but you can just, you can invite. I, I, I just like to invite Him. He just, he just loves language of hunger. David, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. Holy Spirit, I, I'm hungry for you. I must feel your presence. I must hear your voice. And the Holy Spirit, he, he wants to glorify Jesus. He loves to glorify Jesus. He actually doesn't want to take the glory from himself. He wants to give the glory to Jesus. And, he, and he, 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 he guards us to worship Jesus. And the more filled you are with the Holy Spirit, the more you want to worship Jesus and bring glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I tell you, when you get filled with the Spirit, you just, you're just so in awe of Jesus. You want to get to know Jesus. You want to get to know the Father. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God. The Trinity, one God, three persons. The Holy Spirit is fully God, fully God. God, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Isn't that awesome? We have got God living inside of us. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit today. Right now, even while I'm speaking, it's not hard. You first got to be saved. First, got to be born again so that your spirit is born again, comes alive to God, made holy, sanctified, seated in heavenly places in Christ, so that you can be a temple for the Holy Spirit. He'll come and live inside of you. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I surrender. I put my faith in you. 
I believe that Jesus, you are Lord and Savior. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Give your life to Jesus. You'll be born again. You become a child of God in a moment. You don't have to spend a lifetime of doing works. You get born again. And because of that, you want to serve Him. Amen. But you don't have to serve Him for your whole life and then to, in order to be saved. No. No, you, you believe in Jesus. Only Jesus can save. Your works cannot save you. You believe in Jesus. That is the moment. It's, it's believing. Believing unto salvation. Amen. Confessing unto. Believing unto righteousness. It's through faith. And then you just say, Holy Spirit, I want to be filled. Jesus said to the, to the Jews under the law, He said, you, though being evil, would ask, you know, if your child asked you for a loaf of bread, would you give him a stone? Would you give him a scorpion? Would you give him a snake? He said, you being evil. He said, how much more the Heavenly Father will give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? All you got to do is ask. I want the Holy Spirit. Father, I want the Holy Spirit. Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist said, One is coming after me who is greater than I, whose sandals I'm not fit to untie. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. It's Jesus that baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And you can just receive him. It's Jesus, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the apostles laid hands on believers and they received the Holy Spirit. And you can, you can be filled with the Spirit today. And I believe there's just a... I, I've, the word I had for the Philippines this trip when I came, there was, the word I had was empowering grace, the empowerment of grace. And I also had another word, freshness. Whew. Freshness. Freshness. Holy Spirit wants to breathe freshness over you. Fresh strength. Fresh strength vision, fresh passion for this next season of your life. The freshness of the Holy Spirit blowing right now in this place. Go on, just receive it. Just receive it. Just lift your hands. Receive. We release the freshness of the Holy Spirit, the fresh winds, fresh winds to blow in this place. Refreshing, supernatural, refreshing of the Holy Spirit. Come now. Come now. Come now. In Jesus' name, we release. That's it. Just take it. Fresh passion. Unlocking fresh vision. And fresh strength. And the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. There it is. It's just like a spirit of purity as well. It's just... It's just clear, crystal clear waters of the Spirit flowing. It's just flowing, just, just bringing a cleansing. It's just cleansing, taking out toxins, just removing toxins, removing stress from your life, removing fear, anxiety, temptation. Just, just the river just flowing through your life right now. Let them flow. Pure rivers of God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. He loves the language of hunger, of desperation. It's not, it's not I want you, Holy Spirit. I must have you. I must have more of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you. I must have you. I can't live without you. I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you. I must be filled with your presence right now. Right now, right now, in Jesus' name, we release, we release, we release the fresh presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Come on, just receive it. Just receive it. Whew, winds blowing, oil flowing, joy growing. <laughs> that just rhymed. <laughs> I never planned that. Joy, joy of the Holy Spirit. Joy joy of the Holy Spirit joy of the Holy Spirit just just stay in that place just just stay in that place just focused on God on the Holy Spirit let him keep filling you let him keep flowing over you keep receiving keep receiving you'll receive as much as you want to receive tonight
As hungry as you are, you will receive. As thirsty as you want to drink, you, you'll receive. If you're not hungry, if you're not thirsty, you probably won't receive much. But if you're thirsty, if you're hungry, if you drink, then you'll receive. I just want to read out some scriptures to you. You just keep drinking. Some of these scriptures might be, feel like a drink in the Holy Spirit. I'll just, you don't, don't have to put them on the screen. I'll just read them out. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6 it says, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. With joy of the Holy Spirit. You received the word, the gospel of grace, in much persecution, much affliction, but you received it with joy of the Holy Spirit. Acts 13, 52, And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. They go together. Filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 28, You have made known to me the ways of life. You have made me full of joy in your presence. It's Jesus. You have made me full of joy in your presence. In the presence of God, there is the fullness of joy. <laughs> Woo! This is, this is joy not like the world knows. This is not natural earthly joy. This is heavenly supernatural joy that comes from the presence of God. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. His joy is like medicine. <laughs> Woo! There is joy in His presence. Romans 14 verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, etc. But the fruit of the Spirit is joy. People want to keep the Spirit out of the church. You're not going to have the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> fruit of the Spirit is joy. Amen. We want the Spirit. We want joy. 1 Peter 1 verse 8, Whom having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him yet believing. It's talking about while we're living on this earth, we live by faith in Jesus. We, we, we don't see him now, but we, we will see him. We believe in him. We see him in the spirit. Amen. Though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Woo. And I just want to ask, what does that look like? Joy inexpressible. You can't even, it's so joyful, you can't even express it. I don't think words can express it. It's just this bubbling inside of you that just bubbles up, this, this supernatural joy that just bubbles up on the inside of you. And it, and it manifests with laughter and joy and sometimes, oh, <laughs> just whatever. Inexpressible and it's full of glory. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Romans 15, 30. See, this is biblical. I don't know where the religious church gets this from. We can't have joy in the church. It's, it's biblical. In the presence of God, there's joy. Church is supposed to be the most joyful place on earth. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy. God wants to fill you with joy. God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 25, verse 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Heaven is going to be full of joy. Heaven is joy. He's saying enter into heaven. As you enter into heaven, you're entering into joy. Heaven is called joy. Joy is heaven. Heaven, when we enter into heaven, it's going to be the fullness of joy. It's not going to be any sadness, depression. It says there's going to be no more crying, no more tears in heaven. Just joy. Perfect joy. Joy upon joy. Joy like you've never experienced before. Amen. Getting better and better for all eternity. And Jesus said, when you pray, this is how you pray. Your will be done in on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus wants heaven to come to earth now. We don't have to wait till we go to heaven to experience heaven. We can experience heaven now, the glory of God now. 
that realm of heaven. We can experience that now. As we get into the Spirit, as we walk in the Spirit, as we allow the Spirit to come, He brings heaven. You know, there's there's that upon Christ, there's the, the, the stairway. And there's angels ascending and descending. Jesus said, all things are possible to those that believe. Behold, those who believe, you'll, you'll see greater things. You'll see the glory of God. You'll see the glory, the, the stairway of heaven coming down upon through Jesus, through Christ. Not through our works, but through Jesus. Heaven comes down. It touches earth. And there's angels ascending and descending. There's angels sent on assignment from heaven, carrying assignments, carrying heavenly activity from heaven, coming down to earth, ministering, ministering heavenly activity to people. Amen. Supernatural glory, heavenly assignments of angels. We need angels all around us bringing heaven. Don't need to be afraid of angels. Angels is very biblical. People are like, oh, if angels, if you hear angels singing, you know, when Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, the shepherds, they heard a choir of angels singing. They were out in the fields and they heard this angelic sound, this orchestra, this choir of angels singing something so holy about it. And they didn't like start worshiping the angels. they like, where is this Jesus? They went to you and they said, they worship Jesus. Angels, they, they just on assignment from heaven, carrying heavenly assignments and activities people are in the church i don't know if you've experienced that but in the church people are so afraid of if angels come and oh people start worshiping we're not going to start worshiping angels man when angels come when the glory of god comes when the presence of god comes i tell you your heart is just directed towards jesus it just you just get so excited about jesus you just fall in love with jesus there's nothing inside of you that thinks i want to start worshiping angels that's just weird nonsense angels are real You read the book of Acts. How many times people encountered angels? Paul the Apostle encountered angels. When he was on the ship and there was like in the storm for 14 days, everyone thought they were going to die. They hadn't eaten. They were puking. They were just, they were, they were on their very last legs. And an angel appeared to Paul. He said, you will not die. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. And it gave Paul confidence and he rallied the people. And he gave them the instruction of God and they made it through the storm. That was a word that came from an angel sent from God. I want angels in my life. Ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit salvation. Bringing heavenly activity. Amen. Amen. Changing the atmosphere. Bringing heaven's atmosphere into a place. We carry heaven's atmosphere. The kingdom of God is inside of us. Amen. Everywhere we go, we can change the atmosphere. We can shift the atmosphere from that earthly, natural atmosphere. We can shift it to the heavenly, supernatural atmosphere. Amen. Corinthians 14. Corinthians, they were going wild. Amen. They were just abusing the gifts, just going crazy with the gifts. It was like, you know, everyone was just prophesying all at the same time. People were just praying in tongues. Holy Spirit, you know, just just praying in tongues. And they would stand up, pray in tongues, and then sit down. And everyone was confused, didn't know what was going on. It was just, it was just weird. It was just crazy, just chaos. Paul comes in. See, a lot of leaders, they'll come into that today. It's like, oh, you know what? Let's just get rid of all of it. Let's just get rid of all of that. We just won't have the gifts. We just won't do the gifts in church. Holy Spirit gifts. We just won't do that because that's just, it gets weird. Paul didn't do that. Even though the Corinthians were going crazy and wild and being stupid with the gifts, he came in as an apostolic father and he brought correction because the answer to abuse is not non-use, it's proper use. And he came in and he brought instruction and he taught them how to use the gifts properly to be effective. And he said, when people are flowing properly in the gifts and they prophesy the voice of God speaking. He said the lost will come into the meeting and they will be convicted in their heart. They will fall on their faces and proclaim, surely God is in this place. Jude 1.24 Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, praise God, and to present you faultless, That's His grace. 
before His presence, before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. So many people, when they think about standing before God one day on Judgment Day, they, they, they're fearful. They're fearful. They think all my sins are going to be shown on a big screen in heaven, big TV. Everyone's going to see my sins. And they're like, they, 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 they fearful. We're not supposed to be fearful of that day. As born-again believers, there's not going to be a big TV showing our sins because all of our sins were nailed to the cross. They were nailed to Christ. He became our sin on the cross. That written record that stood opposed to us, that was against us, it was nailed to the cross and it was taken away. It was removed. And through that, the enemy was disarmed. The accuser was disarmed. And so if, if all of the written record that was stood against us, all the books, all the accounts, all their books was nailed to the cross in Christ and it was removed. If it's removed, it means it's not going to be in heaven on a big screen it's been taken away we don't need to be fearful of that day we're going to stand before him on that day with exceeding joy we can look forward to that day i'm excited about that day i'm not afraid of standing before god the bible says come boldly before his throne of grace <laughs> isn't the gospel good hey i just i just love it. i could just drink on this drink this all day so much glory on the gospel Stand before Him with exceeding, not just with joy, but exceeding joy. Whew, much more, much more. Last one, Acts 8, verse 9, uh, 7 to 9. For unclean, this is Philip when he was in Samaria preaching the gospel. Mighty things happening. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Praise God. God, that's what happens when the Spirit shows up. When you preach the gospel of grace, the gospel of the kingdom, and the Holy Spirit shows up in power, demons go fleeing. The lame start to walk. Amen. The sick get healed. And there was great joy in that city. Amen. When the Holy Spirit comes, He brings joy. When the power of the Holy Spirit comes, He brings joy. There was great rejoicing and joy in that city. I declare that this is a church of the Spirit of God. This is a church of the gospel of grace, of the gospel of the kingdom of God. This is a Spirit-filled, grace-based church. And I declare that they will preach the gospel at a whole nother level, at a higher level, with signs and wonders following, with the lame being healed, the cripples walking, with demons being driven out, with sick bodies being healed supernaturally by the power of the Spirit, not just through Elvin and Pastor Elvin and Mitch, but every single person in this place being equipped and empowered by the Spirit of God. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to be my witnesses and it will be effortless. It won't be striving and struggling and struggling and striving. It will be effortless in the Spirit as you grow in the Spirit, as you release the Spirit, as you step out in the Spirit. There's an increase. I declare an increase in this place. In Jesus' name. Do you receive that? Amen. Receive it. Say, Lord, we receive it. I receive that now. I take it in Jesus' name. Why don't you just stand to your feet? Just, just stand to your feet, lift your hands, and just begin to worship Jesus. Just begin to worship Him. We can have the band come up. Holy Spirit, come. Come, come, come. Oh, let angels from heaven come down. Come and minister in this place. Mighty angels. Mighty warring angels. <laughs> Declaring war against the enemy, defeating the enemy over your life. Different attacks, assignments of the enemy. Other angels, clean angels, heavenly angels are coming to smash off those bad assignments off your life. Right now by the supernatural assignment of God. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come and blow in this place. We, we release heavenly activity, supernatural signs and wonders, gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing, not just from up front, but amongst each person, even to you right now. Let there be a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Let Him stir up gifts. Let Him speak to you. Let Him speak to your heart. Let Him speak to you right now. Let Him, let him fill you with gifts of faith. In 
Jesus' name.